<laughs> it's been a year. Here we are, the end of 2022. Some good movies have come and gone. Some bad movies have certainly come and gone. We're gonna talk about the bad ones today on my top 10 worst films of 2022. Let's get started, baby. Superhero films have had a good run, and that run is over. Kind of ended at Endgame. We might have shot out one or two other decent ones in that time period, but for the most part, yeah. The MCU really, really troubled. DCU starting over, burning it down from scratch. Uh, what, what do we have here in the 10 spot? Well, we have three movies. Morbius, as I lovingly refer to it as Morbi shit. We have, did Venom 2 come out this year? Cause God, was that awful. No, I think that was last year. We're not gonna count that. We have Thor 4, Love and Thunder. More like Snore 4, Bore 4. And then Black Adam just to sweeten the pot. These are terrible movies. Watchable, I guess. They're like background fodder. You can easily sit there with brain rot and just watch the dumb shit unfold as big name actors stand in front of green screens like I am and get paid a bunch of money to do very little acting, but just kind of screw around or have their ego checked out again. These movies suck. And that's the bottom line. Morbius is it is a chore to sit through. It's ugly. It feels like something that was made in the mid 90s, but not like the good mid 90s superhero stuff, but like Ghost Rider or Jonah Hex. I don't know when these movies came out. Those are probably early 2000s actually. Regardless, I've been alive long enough to see enough bad superhero movies and these are right up there. Fantastic Beasts, The Secrets of Dumbledore. What an embarrassment. What an absolute train wreck. Like, how dare you make these awful Fantastic Beast movies and try to pass them off like they're in the Harry Potter universe. This is, it's just sad. Am I gonna drink this or just hold it? Newt Scamander sucks. It's like the most unlikable lead ever. Uh, I'm a quirky guy, I don't know how to talk to people. That's not fun to watch! You shouldn't be the lead. You can be a side character, which I think is what they tried to do with these later movies because they know how bad he blows. So like, uh, Dumbledore? Young Dumbledore's in this now? Just embarrassing. The movie was miserable to watch. It's way too long. It's way too dull. These are films about magic and there's like no magic in them. And even when there is magic, it has no color. David Yates is now at the point where he's not even trying to make these poppy or fun or exciting for kids. Now they're just for, I guess, people that hate Harry Potter and only want to watch the miserable parts of it where they're just sitting around talking and plotting. And, and the plot, by the way, what the fuck is going on? I can't believe that J.K. Rowling wrote these. Clearly she's meant for book and not for screenplay. Absolutely disappointed with this boring ass ugly film. It's canceled. Warner Brothers canceled the Fantastic Beasts franchise from what I've understood now. There was supposed to be two or three more, maybe just two, but regardless, over, it's all over. How pathetic. Blonde is the story of Marilyn Monroe, told through the eyes of someone that hates Marilyn Monroe. This is a huge chore to sit through. I watched this Netflix exclusive and thought to myself, what the hell is happening right now? Why is it so boring? Why do they hate this woman so much? She's constantly being tormented. I felt so bad. I felt really bad for Arma de Armas to have to cry for three hours. Like imagine eight months of shooting and every day you go in feeling like a piece of shit because that's what your character is. So you're just there crying constantly for hours at a time, going back to your trailer, staying sad because you're gonna have to do it again tomorrow or later in the afternoon. I just couldn't even imagine that production. Like what, what a miserable, miserable experience. And it was more miserable to watch. At moments it's pretty, but it's constantly jumping through time and space itself. You don't know what the hell scene you're on or what year it is. Oh, we're in black and white now for some reason? Now we're back in color? It's art. Love it or leave it. I choose the latter. If you thought the mainstream superhero genre had a rough year, Leatherface says hold my chainsaw. Holy hell, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2022 is awful. Unlikable characters, check. 
Ridiculous scenarios, double check. A villain who seems like a caricature of his former self, triple check. This horror film not only locks down all the horror tropes, but makes them so painful to sit through. This franchise has turned into John Wick. Leatherface just runs around cutting people up like they're made of butter. Uh, he can't die, I don't think. Nothing seems to phase him. I just, I, I'm watching and thinking like, why? It's not scary, it's really dumb. There's no purpose to sit here for two hours and, and have to deal with I wanted all the people dead. That's the other thing. The characters are miserable. A bunch of teens go to a town that they're going to gentrify. They're going to make it a happening place. No. All of you die now. And this franchise is now dead. Moving on. Kill me! Jurassic Park Dominion. What a shit show. What a laughable mess. Why has Jurassic Park fallen so far from grace? Well, I'll tell you why. Because the tried and true formula of a simple script just won't fly anymore for some reason, even though it still works. Now you have to have 45 different plots, with the main one revolving around crop-killing hybrid bugs that are gigantic and it's ruining the world. And then there's a secondary plot with the clone girl trying to get Blue back. And now Owen can just do this to every dinosaur he sees. Not just dinosaur, human. He's like, hey, hey, mm, mm. cars in his way. Easy, 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 big girl. No main character is really in harm's way. You know, they're always gonna get out of the situation. There's no stakes anymore because you don't actually know what the plot is. The storyline's all over the place. It's just noisy. There's a bunch of CG dinosaurs all over. Sometimes they look okay. Most of the time they look like shit. I just, it's like Fast and the Furious Jurassic World. That's what it is now. I, I expected Vin Diesel to show up at some point and be like, I don't got dinosaurs. I got family. And he, he's on his motorcycle. He's like, <laughs> he goes onto a car. He punches a raptor in the face. Then he drops through the window. He's like, <laughs> He looks up and sees Paul Walker smiling down on him. It's been a long day without you, my... <laughs> Shoots up a T-Rex, the carcass goes down. Man, I should start writing screenplays. This might be the first movie on my list where people are like, how dare you, sir? How fucking dare you? Barbarian is a masterpiece in modern horror cinema. Well, if this is a masterpiece in modern horror cinema, you can keep it. And shove it up your ass, because I don't want anything to do with this mess of a film. Look how it subverts expectations. It starts out like your typical thriller, where a woman is forced to stay at an Airbnb with someone who's probably a psychopath because he played a psychopath in like other movies. But then the next thing you know, that script is flipped. He's gone in the basement. She follows him by pulling on some anal beads, opens the door, out comes some nine foot lady with tits of gold, who's somehow not malnourished, living in the dark, Why the original guy's laying in the back room on his deathbed, somehow still alive. I don't, like, who, what are these people eating? How are these people surviving? It doesn't matter, because it's all about throwing you for a loop. Next thing you know, we're in a different movie with Justin Long, and he's heading over there, and now he's in the basement. There's a couple comedy parts thrown in where he's measuring the walls with the tape measure. That's funny, fine. But then we move on to the final act that's just completely absurd. I understand why people like this film. It's a, it's a little roller coaster ride for him. You don't know what's gonna happen next. Things don't make any sense. But then there's other people that push their glasses up and say, you're an idiot, Adam. This movie makes perfect sense. It's all easily explained. You're just not paying attention. There are some people that take this movie literal. There's some people that take this movie metaphorical. There are some people that say everything in this is plausible. There are zero people that can convince me a naked lady jumping off of a water tower like four seconds after the woman falls, getting underneath of her to break her balance is anything short of fucking stupid. What about the black dude that knows everything bad's going on yet he continues to stay in the town for like 20 years? He's like, oh yeah, that lady comes out at night, takes people. 
She's not gonna get me though as I explain the whole plot to you and then BOOM! She blasts through the wall like the Kool-Aid guy. Oh yeah! Kills that dude instantly. This movie's so dumb. I don't, I don't care what you say. I, I won't change my opinion. Barbarian is overrated garbage. And I think there are some people that only like it because there was a brilliant campaign that went out before the movie where a bunch of bots and phony ass critics were like, this movie's brilliant, it's amazing. So then you have a bunch of sheep that are like, yeah, yeah, it is, it is amazing. I'm not saying that's you. You might genuinely like it, that's fine. You have bad taste, but that's fine. <laughs> I'm joking. Let's move on. Speaking of bad taste, let's talk men. Did you know that men suck? The writer of this film does. We're all kind of the same too, no matter if we're white, black, 80, 8. We just keep shitting out the same terrible version of ourselves. Like these guys do at the end of the film, where they literally shit out new versions of adult men. It's a magical experience to watch on the big screen. A guy giving birth to himself, or someone like him. What is the message? Why is there a magical tree? Why are there naked men stalking this woman in this beautifully shot film? And the score is actually excellent too. But what does it all mean? It means I don't care. I could sit and dissect it. I could come up with different cockamamie ideas, but at the end of the day, it's not worth my time because the experience was not fun to watch. To a point, sure. Much like Barbarian, I was hooked for the first 30 minutes, but then once things start to go in these bizarre 824 directions, I'm 820 done. Financially speaking, I'm sure it was a great year for Ana de Armas. Movie-wise, uh, it was a complete dumpster fire. Between Blonde and Deep Water, which I actually forgot came out this year until I went on Letterboxd and saw, oh yeah, that released. I hated it. She and Ben Affleck, believe it or not, dated for a while, or engaged, or married, or I don't actually know. I don't really follow much of the, the Hollywood lifestyle. Uh, but I did know that there were, they were an item, as they say, in 1990. For a while, uh, you could have fooled me because there is zero chemistry on screen in this film, which I guess is maybe kind of the point, but I don't actually know what these characters were supposed to be. I think they were maybe going for a Gone Girl situation with this movie and failed spectacularly. No one in this movie is likable. You don't know who the villain is. You don't know who the good people are. You just want it all to end. It is so boring and empty and dead inside and outside. No one has any personality. They just keep going to these lavish parties where vapid dialogue is spewed and there's nothing to really pick up of substance. Put it in the trash and burn it. Remember the song Firestarter by Prodigy? It's a good jam. You know what's not good? Firestarter by whoever did this movie. I think this was a theatrical and day one exclusive on Peacock, so if you didn't want to go see it in theaters, you could check it out on the cock, baby. Hey, I'm going to the movies. What are you going to do? Oh, I'm going to watch Firestarter on P. Cool beans. I'm going to go sit in a stuffy theater with a bunch of douchebags and watch this movie. Actually, there was really no one there. Maybe one or two other people. And as I sat there, numb to the world, I kept thinking to myself, yeah, this is how the movie was meant to be seen. On the big screen, with its horrible music, it's ugly cinematography. This is a film I am convinced. They just took the raw footage and shat it out. They didn't color correct it or throw any treatment on top of that film at all. It was ready to go. So flat, so joyless. Everything about it is a miss. It's not scary, it's not action packed, it's not funny, it's not dramatic. It's the most their movie I've ever watched. And as it was there, I wanted to be anywhere else. The acting ranges from competent to embarrassing. The effects work is laughable at best. And this is genuinely the only movie I reviewed in 2022 where no one pushed back. No one said, how dare you, sir? Firestarter is a brilliant remake. Uh, an impressive retelling, not one in the entire internet. Granted, my channel's not very popular, but out of all the people that watched it, zero had anything good to say. Zero said, no, Adam, you're wrong. That it's first time in a decade 
Well done, fire starter. Well done. And the winner for the shittiest movie of the year goes to, drum roll please, everything Disney put out. <laughs> Not quite. There was some decent stuff by Disney, but man, have they really let themselves go. Have they really kind of degraded their own properties? And I blame a lot of it on that Fox merger where they got all that Fox good shit and they're like, okay, let's start making movies. And they just started firing crap after crap out on that stupid Disney Plus streaming app. You gotta get content out. We gotta pull in new people. So what do we do? Eh, cheaper by the dozen. That'll bring in some moms. What else do we got in the playbook? How about a sequel to Enchanted called Disenchanted. What do we have for a budget, Todd? Oh, I don't know. What's in my wallet? $60? That'll be enough to do a fully fledged movie. What else do you got? Hocus Pocus 2. Better Hocus Focus, fucker, because we want this thing out by Halloween, and we just started filming last week. That's okay. We have green screens, and we're going to use them to full effect on everything we do. Thor 4 is going to be shot entirely in front of this bitch, and it's going to be shitty bad. Hey, what other classic animated properties can we ruin that were essentially perfect the first time around? We already did Aladdin. We already did Lion King. We already did Beauty and the Beast. We already did freaking Lady and the Tramp that one person saw. I know, let's do Pinocchio. A story I'm convinced no one actually likes, but for some reason continues to watch. And man, was it horrible. Disney, for the longest time, was kind of like Nintendo. When they put their name on a movie, you knew you were going to get at least a solid viewing, if not something incredible. I mean, Nintendo gives us a great Mario game usually, Kirby, Donkey Kong at some point they used to make those games, Zelda, Metroid at one point. You know, they, they have great first party IPs. Disney does too. But at some point in time, like 8 or 9 or 12 years ago, I don't know how long it's been, it's tough to keep track anymore. They decided we're going to be content now. We're just gonna be a machine that shits out content constantly. Take that IP now, brush it off, we're doing it again. It doesn't matter how it looks or sounds or is acted, we're gonna throw one little dumb fuck you in each one of these movies too, to rile up the fan base, to rile up this guy over here so that those people go and watch it. And maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. Throw a trans person in one scene, and we'll pretend like we're the greatest people in the world. Throw in a gay lead protagonist that can say one line in the whole film that will drive these dudes up a wall, and then we can pat ourselves on the back and say, look how progressive we are. Now you can forget about Dumbo. Now you can forget about some of the racist stuff we did in the past, because we've learned from our mistakes, and we're going all in. But these scripts are so fucking dumb and lazy and insulting that we're doing the bare bones on all of it. So that's Disney and most of what we get to look forward to in 2023 because they own everything. Star Wars, Marvel, Fox's entire property lineup, Avatar's freaking Disney. Everybody's saying, oh, how refreshing that a movie that isn't Marvel or superhero based is doing so well. It's still Disney. It's still Disney. Some people might say, Adam, what's the problem if it's Disney or not? Well, I'm telling you the problem, Chad. The problem is... They have no competition. They are a giant. They can make garbage after garbage and eventually we're just gonna be numb to it and say, yeah, this is good. This isn't terrible as you're getting hit over the head with a hammer. I kind of like this. It feels oddly similar to the last thing they did. Well, there you have it. My 2022 worst of list. Does it line up with yours? Were you happy? Are you upset with some of my picks? Let me know in the comments below. Please like the video if you had some fun. Subscribe if you want to hear me more because I post movie content each and every week. Reviews, rants, things I'm excited for, things I'm scared for. All, all that stuff is here. And I would appreciate if you stuck around. Thank you very much and I'll see you next time. Hey, thanks again for watching the video and for sticking around. I should also point out I have a second channel that I just started a week or so back called Adam After Dark. I'm getting videos up there, trying to do it weekly. It's more fun, skit-based comedy humor. So if you like some of my, my jokiness, some of my comedy, then maybe hit me up over there. It's, uh, it's going to be a good time. I need the support. I need the subs. So let's, let's get it rocking. Also, I am on Spotify now, doing a podcast with my buddy DJ Bless. It's called Movies with My Black Friend. It's a ton of fun. We're having a great time. 
they're 45 minute to one hour, sometimes longer, uh, depending on the topic of discussion, just all things movies and occasionally whatever else we get on a side tangent about, but we try to keep it focused. Uh, so yeah, you can join us there as well.